Cambridge Analytica, a very small data firm, you may have heard of them. They were involved with the Facebook privacy scandal as well as various forms of what they call psychographic profiling. Now, there is a lot of debate about the effectiveness of Cambridge Analytica's data, but what we do know is that data is the new oil and data is the future. For Czech Republicans, ZDNet, my name is Dan Patterson, and it's a pleasure today to speak with Forrester anal analyst Jeff Pollard. Uh, Jeff, Forrester always gets tremendous analysis and details. I wonder if you could bring us inside uh, uh, the Cambridge Facebook, uh, I don't want to say scandal because that feels too scandalous, but help us understand the realities of psychographic profiling and the realities of the effectiveness of uh, these types of uh, uses of big data. Yeah, lots of misinformation out there about how effective these technique, techniques are, about exactly what Cambridge Analytica did, whether it was right, whether it was wrong. Ultimately, what happened is I first came across SCL Group and Cambridge Analytica as a result of doing research on the surveillance economy, which uh, is traditionally thought of as the defense industrial base and companies that might sell surveillance technology. But the premise that I made in my initial research was that the data economy was simply a euphemism for the surveillance economy, that they were one in the same. And to your point about data being the new oil, that's what a lot of these companies identified, that there was this rich asset that could be monetized, it could be used to influence people. And that's ultimately what Cambridge Analytica was able to do. Lots of people have heard of Myers-Briggs personality tests the INTJ, ENPJ, right? Everyone's sort of seen these. Well, it turns out that there is a personality profiler out there that is far more effective at determining characteristics and behaviors than Myers-Briggs, and that's the ocean five-factor model of personality. What Cambridge Analytica via Facebook ultimately did was gather data from Facebook users, by the way, using the Facebook API that was a valid use, though now Facebook says that it wasn't, that users of Facebook also consented to when signing up for Facebook. And Cambridge Analytica took those profiles and then using information from Facebook's API was able to determine not just personality characteristics of individuals, but also were able to use location-based information and others to identify things like zip codes of where people might live which then enabled them to make targeted advertising buys to influence people based on their emotions. They were able to determine if you were someone that was more open, more conscientious, more empathetic. Uh, they were able to use that more neurotic and then use it to influence you. Uh, what's particularly powerful is that when Facebook had this API open, with around 70 likes or so from a person, the originators of Cambridge Analytica's research, Kogan et al., were able to determine with 85% prediction your religion, your income, your sexual orientation, your political affiliation. By 2013, after Facebook rolled out likes, the average American had over 70 of them. So by the time this research came out and Facebook had it open, there were already statistical models created that could successfully profile an individual. And Cambridge Analytica tapped into that on behalf of the candidates that paid the money. That's incredibly important to, to uh, get that granular on uh, the Facebook data. And really, this is not a story about Cambridge Analytica. It is a story about the amount of information we all share and how that information is used by all sorts of different companies. One question that people gen ask me is, well, could they really have been effective with this psychographic profiling? And the answer I give is typically, well, Facebook wouldn't be a half trillion dollar company if they weren't doing something right with that data. Now, is that an accurate assessment? That's absolutely an accurate assessment, right? Facebook is a desirable marketing platform because Facebook is able to reach users and Facebook uses the information from those users in a similar fashion to Google, A, to set prices for advertising and other things, but also to allow advertisers to specifically target individuals and have things that appeal to them. So you're absolutely right. 
Facebook gives away access to users because the product is selling the net result of transformed data and analytics to advertisers. So you're right, what Cambridge Analytica did was potentially nefarious, at least that's what authorities are investigating, but what they really did was demonstrate the, the capability of what savvy use of Facebook's platform could enable for an advertiser, and the fact that at its core, what Facebook represents is opt-in surveillance. In order to share photos of your family and stay in touch with people from high school that you probably haven't thought about in a decade, you engage in opt-in surveillance in the same way that adding devices with microphones to your homes might also allow someone to hear what you're talking about. And that's one of the real dangers, right? Because people don't always recognize the fact that, that don't recognize what this data can be used for. But what's also true is that we're held hostage by these platforms. If all of my friends are on Facebook and I wanna see what they're doing, I have no choice but to join Facebook and then make myself a part of that data collection because there's no other mechanism for me to access it. That is the reality of uh, the data world in which we live. There are great uses for data as well. Uh, how can companies who are concerned about the privacy of their users, the privacy of their employers or employees, and, and the privacy of, of data as a whole, uh, make good use of information at large scale without falling into a similar trap? So the first thing these companies have to recognize is that once the data is out of your hands, it's out of your control. And that's exactly what we saw with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Cambridge Analytica said they deleted data, that it appears they didn't, right? They have that in a legal document shared with Facebook. So that's one of the first things companies have to recognize. There are legitimate risks when you decide to commercialize data, when you engage in the data economy. The partners that you work with may not treat your users the same way that you would. So first is to, is to make an informed decision about whether or not it's worth it to participate in the data economy. Secondarily to that, you have to, for your own internal use, decide as part of your corporate social responsibility and as part of your corporate ethics, how you are going to use information about consumers and what uses of that data that you don't want to engage in internally. And by the way, if you make a decision not to use information in a certain way, then you need to consider whether you should keep that information at all. If it's not something you're going to use because you have ethical concerns about it, don't collect it and then your partners never have access to it. So that's one of the other you know, really important things. And the other aspect is be transparent about what you're doing. I, these, these shoddy, half-truth, corporate-speak privacy policies that say, we will never share user information, you know, the next sentence of that is, but we might share your information that we've analyzed. So it means they're not going to share just information. They're going to share some randomly seeded, algorithmically transformed information about Jeff. Well, then if they have a bad platform and somehow uh, the way that they can link that information to, we, to me the same way that Cambridge Analytica was able to do through Facebook because of some design decisions Facebook made, well, suddenly they violated that promise, right? So be transparent and don't speak legalese. Tell users that you're going to sell your information and tell them how you're going to do it. And just like GDPR now requires for European folks, unfortunately, America would have the same protections, make, give customers the option to opt out and the right to be forgotten. These are basic rights that individuals should have, right? I have a right to privacy and companies are taking that away from me.